Hi, this is Russell Stanow from teachertrainingvideos.com. Today we're going to look at three of my favourite tools for collaborating. Getting our students working together, sharing content. I'm going to do three tools at different levels. So an easy one for brainstorming, a one, another tool that we can use more for kind of sharing ideas, projects, group work. And then a more sophisticated tool if we really want our students to build texts together and to really collaborate in some kind of writing tool. Hope you like the video. Key tools for collaborating with our students. If you do, please like it, please share it, and of course, please comment on it. Let's get started. So the first collaboration tool we're going to look at is called Answer Garden. Answer Garden is really simple because you don't need to sign in. You can simply create an Answer Garden, share the link with your students. They can click on the link and then write their answers. So let me quickly show you how it works. So notice that it's answergarden.ch. So I'm just going to click on the button here. And it's going to open up a screen. And the button that you need to click on to add your question is here. So I'm going to click on this button here. And then I can simply type in a question. Now, the idea of Answer Garden is it's short, quick. So it's about brainstorming, quickly sharing ideas, and getting them together in one visual display. So I'm going to ask the question, uh, for example, what technology do you use most in the classroom? Okay, so that's my question. Now, I've got a few settings here that you can look through. Um, I normally set it to classroom mode so that people can submit um, one answer. But if you want it to be brainstorm mode, then in this case, uh, they can add uh, unlimited copies of the same answer, so different people can still put the same answer in, and that will make that answer get bigger. Um, so that's a good option. So you've got a few options here if you want to limit it to one particular answer of one particular idea, or whether you can have multiple people writing in the same answer. You can also control the answer length. I always set it to 40 because I find that 20 is just too short. You have the option here of actually even setting it as password control if you want to do that. I normally don't do any of the other things. I simply click on uh, create. Now, this isn't something that you're going to be able to keep forever. The idea of this is that it's something that you're going to display and that you're collecting ideas together. Of course, if you do want to keep a copy of whatever you've made, you can print it out. But these answer gardens can last for an hour, a day, a week, etc. I'm going to make my one last for a day. I click on create. It's as simple as that. Now, the answer garden is created. I've got a link here at the top. I just simply share that link with my students. Now, one nice thing about answer garden is the link Link length is normally very short, so I can share that link, for example, write it on the board or share it on Edmodel or share it on Moodle. Students click on the link and write their answers. So let's imagine now that I'm a student and I'm writing in my answer. So I click here and I'm going to write Kahoot. OK, and then that will then come onto the screen. It will just take a few seconds and you'll see in a minute that Kahoot is now added to the uh, answer. Let's add another example. So I'm going to write the example of, say, Google Forms. And I'm going to add that. And you'll see then, so you can have multiple students adding up their answers onto the screen and that project that onto the screen so that all the answers become available. Now we can see that Google Forms and Kahoot. And if we roll over, we can actually see how many people have written that option in. That is how simple it is to use Answer Garden. There's no need to log in. There's no need to um, get your students to log in. You simply share the link. They click on the link and write in their answers, and it will all be visualized on the screen. It's one of the easiest brainstorming technologies that we can use. The next tool that we're going to look at is called Padlet, and Padlet is great for collaboration, it's great for group work, it's great if you're getting your students to work on projects. Accounts are free and you're allowed to create up to three Padlets at a time. But what you can do is create a Padlet, and then if you're happy with it, you can copy it as an image, and then delete the original Padlet. You've still got the image, and then you can create another one. So you can have up to three Padlets, and it's a very common technology that you see in a lot of teaching and learning contexts. So I've got some examples on the screen here, but basically what a Padlet does is it creates a kind of board where people can add up their ideas onto the board, but they're not limited here 
to just simply writing, which is what you can do on Answer Garden. Here they can add links, they can add video, etc. So if I create a Padlet, I can click on this button here. So I'm logged into my account. I click on Padlet and I've got various different layouts that I can use. I'm going to use one of the most typical ones, which is the grid. So I'm going to select a grid. And the first thing you need to do with a Padlet is to give your Padlet a name. So there's a couple of things to just set up. So I'm going to call this one here what technologies we like. What technologies do you use? So that's going to be my question. I'm going to write a quick description and I'm going to call this Padlet on technologies. So just a couple of settings. This tool is actually quite sophisticated and can do quite a lot of things, but I'm just going to show you the basics of it. Once you've set that up, the next thing you need to do is click on this button here and now it says start posting. Now again, what you need to do here is to share this link with your students and that might be a problem. And I'm gonna show you a little trick that will help you to actually make the link shorter so you can share it quicker. But the idea now is that once students access the Padlet, they can double click on the screen and as you can see, they've got lots of options. So they can write a title, which perhaps is gonna be their name and then they're gonna write about a technology they like. So I'm gonna say, I love screen capture technology and then I've got all these options of either sharing a picture or for example sharing a link or uploading something etc so you can make this look really visual as well we're not limited here to just simply writing text so as an example and one that I frequently use I'm going to click here on the link button and what I can do is I can put in a link to a YouTube video so for example, if I wanted to share this video here, I click on the share button on the video and then copy the link, come back to the Padlet and paste that link in, simple as that, and click on save. Now look at the Padlet and you'll notice that the video is actually visualized on the screen. And this is the really powerful thing about working with Padlet. So another student can come up and add their ideas. It can be, again, pictures, it can be uh, videos, it can be just simply text, and you can build up a really nice a uh, piece of work, a group collaborative activity with different uh, technologies or different types of content, including pictures, links, uh, text, etc. Now, one great thing about Padlet is that um, you can also share it in various different ways. So once you've created the Padlet, you can click on the share button here and notice what you can do if you want to share it or embed it. So you can click here and get an embed link, which you can then take the Padlet and put it into a blog or you can, for example, um, click, copy the link and then it could be shared in an ePortfolio, etc. So again, I'm doing that really simple. I'm going to put a link up here to a longer set of videos about how to use Padlet. Padlet's a great tool and it is one that we see a lot in teaching and learning. The third tool I want to look at is Google Docs. Google Docs is a great way of getting students to collaborate. And when you work with Google Docs, you can really work a lot on getting text together, getting students to write quite long pieces of text and collaborate on them. All you need to do to do this is to have a Google account. You have a Google Drive if you have a Google account. You can click on your Google Drive and all you need to do is to create a doc. As soon as you create a doc, you have a link and that link can be clickable. And if a link is clickable, then you can share it with other students and they can collaborate on the document. And I'm gonna to try to show you an example. So I'm gonna click here on new and I'm gonna create a Google doc okay here and what I often do when I create a Google Doc is that I organize it so that group A know exactly where they can write group B know where they can write etc so I give the doc a title so I'm just going to click here at the top of the screen and I'm just going to call this Google Doc test And then what I normally do here is I insert a kind of table so that it's really clear where I want the different groups to write. So I'm just going to make this really simple example and normally move the screen like this so that we can write the name of the group here. So group one can write here, sorry, and group two can write here and group three can write here. Now what we can also do is actually make the area bigger. So it's going to make that nice and equal. I can kind of increase the size of the area. And I might have a 
for example, the students working in groups and I get one student to write their answers. Now, how do students write in their answers? Well, simply they need access to the doc and all you need to do is to click on the share button here and You've got two ways of sharing a document with students. You can either email it to them. So if you know their email addresses, you can put their email addresses in, in here and then click here and make sure you've set it to can, can edit and click on done and send them directly the link. But the other way is to simply share the link and you can do that by clicking here. So if you click on this option, you can do exactly the same. You can set whether the students can edit, comment or view a document and I'm going to set that they can edit it so they can actually write inside it and then you need to copy this link. Now one of the big problems with Google is that these links are really long so it's great if you can share it in Odd Model or share it on Moodle etc but if you can't do that what you really need to do is make this link shorter and I'm going to quickly show you how you can shorten the link and that way your students can write it in more easily and then access the document and write in their ideas. What we can do to shorten the link is to use a website called Teeny URL. And if I go to Teeny URL and I click on it, all I need to do is to paste in the link of the very long link that uh, we've got from Google. So if I come back to Google and just copy that link and then open up Teeny URL and I just simply paste in the link so I paste the complete link in and then click on Make Teeny. And what it's going to do is going to make a much shorter copy of that link. Just close that window down. There it is, much shorter as you can see. That was much easier for students to, to copy down. And I can copy to clipboard. And then obviously what I would do with that is I would share it on a whiteboard so the students could then write it in. So that way we can make the link a lot quicker. Now let's imagine now that we're actually going to access this document. So maybe we are group one. And as I said, what I tend to do is just have one person doing the writing. I'm going to click here. I'm going to paste in that link and then I'm going to click on enter. It's going to take me straight into that Google Doc and I will be able to write in the doc. Um, and just let's just wait for it to come on the screen. So you can see it on the screen now and imagine I was in group one well then I would just click here and I would begin to add my ideas uh, into this area of the screen and I can simply just write and if I was obviously group two then I would write here etc. So a really good way of getting students to work together and collaborate together on tech so I tend to use Google Google uh, Docs when I'm asking my students to write more extensively if they're giving their opinions or their thoughts on a particular topic and I'm looking for more extensive writing then I would tend to use Google Docs. I really hope that helped. We've looked at three tools, Answer Garden, Quick Answers, up to 40 characters. We've looked at Padlet, which is a great visual way of getting students to collaborate together ideas where they can include um, pictures and links and video etc and also I have included Google Docs where we can really do extensive writing and get students to collaborate together and I've also given you a tip to how you can make the link shorter if you haven't got a tool like Edmodel or Moodle or Blackboard to share your links you need to make the link shorter so that students can write them in and then access the document in the class and write up their ideas one nice thing about all these tools of course is that you can use them at home with your students I really hope you like the video. Uh, I will give you, at the end of this, extra learning on all of these tools. So if you want to learn more about Google Docs and Padlet, um, and if you did like the video, please like it. Please share it with other teachers. And most importantly of all, if you've got any questions for me, please leave the questions below, and I will do my best to answer. And thank you very much. If you're looking for more free content, then please come to teachertrainingvideos.com. Lots of different uh, topics here along the top of the screen, and you'll see the videos underneath. You simply click on the video and play it. If you'd like to follow my work, there's really two things you can do. Uh, on the right hand side here, sign up to my newsletter and that way you'll be updated with all the latest videos, all the latest articles, because I write various blog posts, uh, all the latest um, webinars that I run and short courses that I'm organizing and the other thing that you can do is to follow me on my YouTube channel which is really growing now I think we're up to around about eight and a half thousand followers and if you follow me on YouTube that means you'll get access to all the backdated content as well 
Finally, if you want to contact me about me uh, doing a presentation for you or doing any online training, I do online training one to one and I do lots of presentations and workshops around the world, then you can connect with me from my webpage by simply coming here and clicking on contact Russell. And thank you very much.